Okay, now the, the other question I asked you was the survival time. Um, most of you said, the majority of people said it was about five minutes. In fact, if you stood at that spot, you had 90 seconds to live. So if you were on that dance floor for more than 90 seconds, you'd be dead. Okay, that's how fast these, 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 uh, these fires can develop. Um, no talk on fire at Greenwich would be complete without some mention of the Cutty Sark. So uh, I'm just going to show you, uh, share some thoughts about this. This is a picture of the Cutty Sark in her heyday. And this is how we came to know the Cutty Sark and love the Cutty Sark. And this is what she was like uh, about a month ago. A tragic uh, fire. Uh, I just want to spend a bit of time talking about this. Uh, my colleagues in CMS, uh, Chris Bailey and, and, uh, and Stoyan, they're doing a, a large project trying to uh, simulate the structure to help with the renovation and the lift of the um, Cutty Sark. So this, these pictures are coming from their work, modelling the structure of the Cutty Sark. Cutty Sark is a composite structured uh, vessel. So it has a wrought iron hull, uh, hull frame and deck beams, and it has uh, basically wooden planking and wooden decking. So it's a composite uh, wrought iron and, uh, and wood. This gives you an idea of the cross section. These, these are hull elements. These are made out of wrought iron. These are the beams going across that are also wrought iron. And these are the stringers. These are also wrought iron. And then you put the wood planking goes over through here to make up the hull and you get the, the wood going across the top for, for the decking. Now as part of the restoration work, uh, some 50% of the planking was removed. And so here you can see uh, the first layer of planking being removed. And in fact, you can just make out in this picture that um, at the time of the fire, the planking was removed all the way down to the water line. Okay, so a lot of the um, precious wood had been released, uh, removed. Uh, after the fire, some 12% of the remaining planks that, are, that were left in place were, were damaged uh, by the fire. There's quite severe char damage. Uh, but the planks aren't destroyed. There's char damage. Uh, that indicates to me that the temperatures around here were about 280 degrees centigrade. because That's the sort of temperature that you get charring of wood. Now, the open structure, the fact that they removed all the wood up to the water line, that was obviously a blessing because you saved a lot of the wood. It didn't get consumed in the fire. It was also a blessing because it allowed when the firefighters started their uh, uh, um, aggressive action, they could get the water sprays deep into the, into the structure. But it was also a curse why was it a curse? Well, this allowed lots of ventilation and allowed air, oxygen, into the fire to feed the seed of the fire. So the fact that all this wood was removed was both a blessing and a curse. It helped, and it actually helped spread that fire very, very rapidly. Um, a significant part of the fire as well, and when we saw these pictures, I think a, lo a lot of us, uh, our jaws dropped to the floor. But a lot of the fire was actually the protective canopy that was over the, um, over the ship and so was not really of any importance to the, to the structure of the, of, of, of the vessel. However, you can see here, this picture here, you can see the fire blazing inside the ship and you can see it down here as well. So there was a, a, a pretty aggressive fire inside the vessel as well. And much of the decks have been lost on board the Cutty Sark due to the fire. 30% of the main deck was actually original, original timbers, 30% of it. And about 50% of that had been removed prior to the fire. Uh, of the remaining uh, wood, some 35% is lost and about 15% is charred but recoverable. Um, if you look at the other decks, the twin deck, that was a total loss. But that's not really a great tragedy because that's, that was circa 1920s. That wasn't original uh, ship. And also the lower deck was again 100% write-off, but that was a false deck and again not an original piece of the ship. So again, that's not, um, that's not a great tragedy. Now the real concern is the wrought iron. These are wrought iron, the, these are the, 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 the beam, the, 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 beam um, uh, uh, the beams holding up the, the decks. If you look at structural steel in fire, this is not structural steel, it's wrought iron, but steel and iron are actually very poor materials in a fire environment. If you heat the steel up to about 600 degrees centigrade, and in big fires you easily get over 1,000 degrees. 
If you heat up structural steel to 600 degrees centigrade, you lose about two-thirds of its strength and you get the building collapse because of that. And this can lead to a significant distortion of the structure. However, um, if you... I, I was on the ship a couple of... Um, last week, a couple of weeks ago, walking around having a look at it. And to the naked eye, these beams don't look as though there's any significant distortion at all. So it looks like these haven't been that greatly affected by the fire. In fact, if you look closely on these beams, and in fact most of the beams, you can still see paint on the beams. Uh, that tells me that the temperatures around there couldn't have been that high because most paints will f burn to char at about 260 degrees centigrade. So these beams couldn't have been exposed to that high temperature for, for too long. However, if you look at, now this is hard to see, but you can see some of the wrought iron stringers. These are the thin plates. They are severely distorted. Now they're thin plates. These are thick beams. They'll take a long time to heat up. These thin plates, you can see there's significant distortion. They've been very badly damaged by the fire. Now another issue with the um, oops, another issue with this is the um, is the heating and subsequent rapid cooling by the water sprays that could have changed the uh, uh, the metallurgy of the wrought iron, uh, and as a result, it could be made quite brittle. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the lift, this could cause a problem. Okay, so that's that's something that needs to be investigated a lot uh, a lot further. One of the things we would like to do is to simulate this fire and understand the fire dynamics and try and predict uh, what's going to happen to the structure. Uh, we can do the fire simulation and then we can work with our colleagues, Professor Chris Bailey and Stoyan, and we can merge the calculations together. We can do the fire, we can tell them the temperatures, we can tell them what's burning, and then he can say what's going to happen to the, uh, to the structure itself, the wrought iron. Okay, that's really the only comments I've got. I, I must say I have no privileged information here. It's just going to the site and looking at it uh, has come up with these um, observations. Okay, then to conclude, um, the use of computational fire engineering tools in conjunction with good data enable fewer arbitrary assumptions to be imposed, allowing conditions to be modelled rather than assumed. So we can actually model real fire situa situations. However... The computer model does not replace the engineer's need to think, but should encourage a questioning approach. These tools do not replace the good engineer. They're tools to aid the engineer making informed decisions. Above all else, the partnership of sound engineering understanding and judgment and computer simulation should help to make our environment better by design. And my final words are, of the 36 ways to confront danger, Running away is best. Now, this is actually a proverb, an old Chinese proverb. I've adapted it slightly, uh, but it's from uh, almost 2,000 years ago, uh, and so uh, I think it's uh, something worth bearing in mind. Always think about your evacuation. If you're on board a plane, always look where the exits are. Count the number of seats to an exit. If you're in a hotel, check where the exits are. Don't just simply look at the instructions at the back of the door. Walk the evacuation route. And when you come to places like this, especially places like this, ancient buildings, make sure you know where the emergency exits are. Thank you very much.